All right, we'll go ahead and get started uh, with uh, number 26. Number 26. We'll just sing the first and second. First and second, uh, number 26. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, again for this opportunity we have to um, gather together to hear your word preached, Lord. I pray that you would uh, be pleased with our worship of you. I pray that you would uh, help us to have hearts that are uh, prepared to receive your word, and that, Lord, that you would cause it to fall on good soil and bring forth fruit. It's in Christ that we pray. <coughs> Amen. All right, number 58. Number 58. <laughs> First and fifth, part number one and number five.
Okay, uh, children can go in the other room and have their meeting in the other room. A couple of uh, announcements as we um, transition to the other room. Um, got a note this week from Fan, and uh, she says, uh, Dear Pastor Tim and the church, how are you? Is everything going well? The, uh, have the bat has the bad weather in Japan been affecting you a lot? Um, thanks for your prayers. And then I'm doing well and getting used to the time and everything here. Uh, most of the time I'm spending with Elijah's uh, family inside the house, uh, feeling peace and warmth here. So, And then she said, this is a picture of uh, me and Elijah. Um, and so that's her uh, uh, Konyaku, uh, engagement uh, picture, evidently. So uh, that's, that's him and that's her. And uh, you can see a little bit of the family there. And it uh, looks like they're having some good desserts. But <laughs> so, uh, and then she said, uh, she finished up saying, I miss you all. And she said, uh, please pray for me also and for all of us here that we will keep fighting wisely God, in God's direction for physical and spiritual battles we are facing. Okay, So I always keep you in my prayers and uh, please stay safe, fan. So uh, please continue to pray for her. And uh, she... Uh, has a lot to do and uh, a lot to get used to and uh, and pray that her visa will come through and everything that will work out for God's glory. And uh, so pray for them and their new lives together. Okay. All right, uh, a couple of other announcements. We have ladies, uh, English ladies Bible study on Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday at 7 p.m. So if you're able to come to that, uh, please uh, be right here at 7 p.m. on this coming Tuesday, the uh, day after tomorrow. So. And then uh, the, the uh, July the 26th will be the fourth Sunday. It will be our next uh, combined service in Potluck. And then on the next uh, August, the fourth week in August, we're planning on having uh, the pastor and our missionary Shibayama, the Shibayamas to Cambodia. And uh, we support them now. And so uh, they're stuck in Japan, can't get back, can't get back to Cambodia evidently. So uh, if, if it works out, we haven't confirmed with them yet, I haven't talked to them yet, but... Uh, that's the plan so far as to be on the 23rd. So be looking forward to that, and that'll be our combined service. And uh, so looking forward to uh, seeing him. Um, probably most of you have never met him and uh, his family, so hopefully he'll be able to bring his family and come. Uh, but we'll talk to him and see. But look forward to the, the fellowship meetings there, okay? All right. Um, last week we uh, we talked about, we were in Revelation. Remember we were in Matthew talking about uh, the tribulation time. We've been talking about how uh, four ways to eternity and one is to die and go to heaven or one die and go to hell. And the other is if you're alive when Christ comes back, then if you're not saved, you'll be going through what the Bible refers to as a tribulation or a great tribulation. And we talked a little bit about that last week. Uh, and then we talked in Matthew chapter 24 and 25, talks about the tribulation and then uh, the um, second coming of things. And then Revelation uh, talks about uh, the, during the, the occurrences during the tribulation time and many things. And we looked last week about the seven seals. And then the seventh, seventh seal uh, is the seven trumpet judgments. And uh, last week we talked about, we had, we mentioned four of them last week. Uh, number one uh, in verse chapter 8. Verse 7 says uh, that the vegetation was destroyed. Uh, a third of the vegetation was destroyed. A third of the trees and the, all the grass and stuff. And then the second one, uh, a third of the sea's uh, occupants died. Everything that was in the sea and a third of the ships, it said, were destroyed or died. And that was in chapter 8, verse 8 and 9. And then a third of the waters uh, became bitter. All right? And then uh, we left off saying a third of the cosmos was darkened, a third of the, uh, the sun was darkened, and the moon was darkened, and things like that. And so today we want to start number five, and we'll get as far as we can. Uh, this morning we finished up uh, all the judgments. So there are seven um, seal judgments, and then the seventh seal judgment leads to the seven trumpet judgments, and the seventh trumpet judgment leads to the seven vial or bowls or... or um, uh, Judgments of God. So, um, so we're looking at uh, we're looking at the trumpet judgment right now. So, number five, uh, the locusts hurt the unsealed men and had ability to torture for seven months uh, or five months. I'm sorry. So, Revelation chapter nine, 
uh, verse 1 through 12. Yeah, let me look at this in here because it's a little bit bigger. Revelation chapter 9. If you, we're going to be reading a lot today just so we can cover these. I don't want to uh, tell you my opinion of them. I'm just going to read them straight, uh, what happens here. So uh, <laughs> Revelation chapter 8 and uh, verse, uh, I'm sorry, 9, verse 1 through, 1 through um, 12 says this. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star falling from heaven to earth. And he was, and he was given power, uh, given the key to the... Uh, wait a minute, I'm reading the wrong version. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not used to that version, so let me read the version I'm used to. Uh, let's start over. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fell, fall from heaven to earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And, the, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose smoke out of the pit, and the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke from the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded to them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men who have not the seal of God in their forehead. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should uh, be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. In those days <clears throat> shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shape of the locusts were like uh, unto horses prepared to battle, and their heads uh, were as the crown of like gold, and their faces were the faces of men, and their hair was uh, as the hair of women, and their teeth was as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as the breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Uh, verse 12. Um, and they had a king over them, uh, which, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name was in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue uh, hath his name Apollyon. And uh, one woe is past, and behold, uh, there come two woes more hereafter. And this, okay, and that's the, the fifth seal, uh, the fifth trumpet, I'm sorry. Okay, and so, uh, you know, Many people I've seen, I don't know if you've seen these um, chick tracks, and they kind of make a cartoon out of things that they think the Bible, and I saw one of these one time, and, and they interpret this as, like, you know, it's a helicopter with a machine gun. It's like it has stings, man, okay, but that doesn't work, you know. It's, it hurts them for five months, and uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, all of this thing is, it's not explainable. It's a miraculous uh, judgment of God, okay? And the point is, you know it's from God. They know it's from God. And we'll see that more clearly as we go on. They know it's from God. It's not a natural phenomenon. Uh, it's not, you know, well, we have earthquakes now, but these earthquakes are earthquakes that you know they're not natural earthquakes. And all these things are not things that are natural. You can't explain away uh, these things, you know. And so these things are judgments that God produces, and everybody knows that God is the one that's doing them. Okay, And we'll see that a little bit more clear. And so these are not some uh, invention of man they're not some natural phenomena you know we we have locusts with us now but these obviously aren't like the locusts you know locusts don't sting like a scorpion okay uh, they're obviously some uh, some judgment of god that's not something that's natural okay it's something that god uh, allows or produces i don't know if these are uh, demons or, or creatures or what uh, but some it's a judgment that god allows it's a judgment that god has prepared for those who are on this earth and uh, and to show that he is the uh, god but uh, men don't trust god but this was they had the ability to sting for five months and evidently the pain was so much that you wish you could die okay and uh, they would seek to die that they couldn't all right um and so this is a a, a judgment of god upon uh, man all right, we'll, we'll just go through them uh, real quickly. Uh, I'm sorry, the second one is, or the number six, goes on to say in verse 13, uh, and the sixth angel sounded. So the, the sixth one is, a third part of the men were killed. Okay, 
by fire, which uh, was pursued by the mouth of the angels. Okay, and so verse uh, 13 through verse 21 says this. Verse 13 through 21 says this. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice uh, from the four uh, horns of the golden altar, which are before God, saying, The sixth angel, which had the trumpet, uh, saying to the sixth angel, turned loose the four angels which are bound in the great e river Euphrates. Uh, and four angels uh, were loosed, and they were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year to slay the third well, it's a good time for my iPad to lock up. <laughs> All right. Let me just get out of that and go back. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Let me get back in here. It should come back right in the same place. So, okay, there we go. Uh, All right, Verse. what was on? Verse 13. Six angels sounded. Okay. Well, let's just read 14. Uh, saying the sixth, uh, to the sixth angel with Tetrum, but loose the four angels uh, which were bound in the great river of Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men. So a third of the population of the world. Uh, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. Okay. So what's that, two million? And I heard the number of them, and I saw the, ho the horses in the vision, uh, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of uh, jacinth and brim brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Um, by, these, uh, three, by these three were the third part of men killed by fire and smoke and by brimstone, which issued out of their mouth. Uh, for their power was in their mouth and in their tail, and uh, for their tail, their tails uh, were like serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men, which are not killed uh, by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that uh, they should worship, uh, not worship the devil or idols of gold or silver or brass or stone or wood, which neither can see nor hear nor wa wa walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, or of their fornication, or of their thefts. Okay? So this is another judgment that uh, God produced on uh, men that are deserving. And the funny thing is, this, this says it right here, and it several, says it several times, uh, more times. Uh, but they did not repent, uh, even though God had brought these severe, severe judgments. Um, some did repent. Uh, probably uh, many, many hundreds of thousands of people uh, will be saved during the tribulation. I don't know what the population of the earth, you know, all the Christians will be gone in the tribulation, uh, in the, before the tribulation, in the time of the rapture. The rapture will occur and then the tribulation comes after that. And so there won't be any Christians here at the beginning of the tribulation. But by the end of the tribulation, there are many, many, it says many as the sands of the sea. There are many, many uh, people that were killed for the testimony of Christ uh, and so there are many people that will be saved during the tribulation time. Uh, but, you know, I don't know what the Christian population will be when the rapture occurs. <laughs> Maybe only, you know, 10% of the earth's population will leave, and so that won't be that much. And, uh, but it will be a great population. You know, we, what was it? Uh, are we 7 billion now or close to over 7 billion people right on the earth? And so uh, even if 10%, you know, uh, leave, that still leaves, you know, about seven billion, you know, six, six something billion people. Uh, and so uh, many, many people uh, will go through tribulation. But um, so there are a lot of people, a third of the population of the earth. So if, if you take it, you know, if it's, if it's six billion, a third of that is two billion people. By in this one judgment, okay, the sixth trumpet judgment. And there are other judgments that a quarter of the people die and. Uh, all sorts of things. And so you would think, you know, if it was me, I'd look around and see. This, and then and they knew it was from God, okay? Because uh, we'll see in, in the next uh, couple of judgments that uh, they blaspheme God's name. They knew it was from God and they cursed God. Instead of repenting and turning from their sins and saying, God, you've justly brought this on us because we're sinners, they curse God. They don't repent. They don't uh, turn to him, okay? All right, so that's the sixth um, uh, trumpet judgment. 
And then, of course, oops, the seventh one uh, is, you know, the seventh uh, seal judgment is the seven trumpet judgments, and the seventh trumpet judgment is the seven um, vial or um, bowl judgments. And so, um, verse uh, chapter 11, let's look at chapter 11, and then verse uh, 15 through 19. Chapter 11, verse 15 through 19. And uh, we'll read that. Chapter 11, verse 15 through 19 says this. Uh, and the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world are become the kingdom of our Lord, the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God uh, on their seats, fell down on their, upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give thee thanks, O God, O Lord God my Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken uh, to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry and wrath and and angry, and thy wrath uh, is come in the time of the dead, and they shall be judged. And that thou uh, shouldst give reward to the servants and thy prophets and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was a scene in the temple of the ark of his testimony, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquakes and great hail. Okay, we mentioned this before, but uh, that, that, uh, those four things, the lightnings and voices and thunders and earthquake, are all mentioned at the last of each of the judgments. So the last of the seven um, first seal judgments, the last verse says there were uh, lightnings and voices and thundering and earthquakes. And then this says there are lightning and thundering and earthquake and then it adds great hail. And then the last of the last judgment will say the same thing. We'll look at that when we get there. Okay? And so God is bringing seven uh, vile judgments, seven bold judgments. Uh, on the uh, or the next is a result of the seven it's the seventh trumpet judgment. Okay, so the seventh seventh trumpet judgment leads to the seven last or final uh, plagues, the final final judgment. Uh, some versions say vials, some say bowls. Okay, full of the wrath of God. Right, and that's in verse uh, chapter sixteen, uh, fifteen and sixteen. And so we're going to look at that in chapter uh, the first. Now these are short. These are uh, these are more in quick succession, one after the other, evidently. So the verses are very short, and they're connected right next to other, each other. Okay, and so these won't won't be long verses like like the other passages. Uh, but chapter sixteen and uh, verse two, chapter sixteen, verse two says this. Um, well, let me just read one and two. It says, "I heard a great voice of the temple saying, the seven angels, go your way, pour out." the vials, or the bowls, of the wrath of God upon the earth. And then uh, verse 2 says, uh, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon men, which had the mark of the beast, and upon them who worshipped his image. Okay? So this, this sores, I don't know what exactly it is. Um, I don't know what a noisome sore is, but evidently it was a horrible, horrible sore, like a boil or something like that, you know. Have you ever had a boil? Uh, you know, have you ever boiled all over? <laughs> you know, that, that's painful, okay. Uh, and these are judgments from God. And so uh, that is the first uh, vile judgment, the, the bowl of the wrath of God poured out upon the earth and the first result in this, this sword. But it wasn't uh, upon those who had the mark of the Lamb, okay. There, there's, you know, in... The beginning of uh, Revelation, men are given a mark, and if they won't take the mark of the beast, uh, they are uh, not able to do business, not able to buy things, uh, and they're persecuted and, and killed. Uh, but, and so there was a mark of a beast, but this is reversed. The mark, the only those who had the mark of the beast uh, were affected by this plague and, and several other plagues too. And so it is obvious that God is uh, doing this, and he is putting a distinction between those who... Uh, have the seal. Uh, those who are, see who are sealed by the, by the seal of the mark of the Lamb have some kind of mark. I don't know what it is exactly, uh, but 
uh, they cannot be killed. They cannot be, uh, you know, nothing can happen to them. Uh, and so, but this is only upon those who had the mark of the beast, the mark, the, you know, 666, the mark of the, whatever that is. And I don't think that's a number six and a number six and a six on their forehead. I don't know what it is, but uh, some kind of mark that identifies them as taking the mark of the beast and, and yielding to his uh, power. And those who don't take the mark of the beast, uh, many of them are killed, but uh, and then many of them are given the, the mark of, of the Lamb, and uh, they are uh, indicating that they're following the Lamb, not the, not the beast. Okay? But, so, this only fell upon those who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. Okay? So this is obviously a judgment from God. All right? And then secondly, um, in verse uh, 3, uh, the sea became as blood. Okay? Uh, ver verse 3 says, and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as blood of a dead man. And every creature, every living soul died in the sea. Okay? We saw before one of the judgments, one of the um, seal judgments was, uh, I believe it was a seal judgment, was a third of the people in the ocean, a third of the living creatures in the ocean, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Now that you know that was bad enough. This was every living creature in the ocean. You know, can you imagine? You know, what would that do? First of all, you know, no more seafood. <laughs> okay, no more shrimp, no more octopus, nothing. You know, no more takoyaki. You <laughs> know, sorry. <laughs> and then secondly, you know, if all those sea creatures are dead, can you imagine? You know, dead carcasses of fish uh, floating uh, into shore, and the stench, and the you know smell, and everything it'll produce is just a horrible, horrible uh, condition. Uh, and that was the, the second uh, vile judgment, the bold judgment of the wrath of God that was poured out. And so uh, a third of the creatures, uh, did I read that already? Yes. All right. Uh, a third of, the, uh, of every, I'm sorry, no, that's not a third. Uh, all of the living creatures, the rest of the, sea, the creatures in the sea that didn't die because you know, the, when the third of them died, uh, died. Okay. So that's another horrible judgment. And then number three, uh, the rivers and the fountains of water became blood. Now, this one, number two says, uh, the second angel poured out a vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of dead men. So it didn't say it came, became blood, it became as blood. But this one says in verse uh, four, and th four through seven, uh, look at that, it says, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water saying, Thou art righteous, O Lord, uh, which art and wast and shall come, because thou hast judged th thus. Uh, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another uh, out of the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Okay? And so the third uh, uh, vile judgment was that all the rivers and the fountains, uh, the, the waters of the, the um, in Japanese, Minamoto, the source where the rivers come from. You know, if you go far enough up in the mountains, you'll see where the river starts, okay? Where the river starts became blood, okay? And so all the rivers were blood. Um, and so evidently they had to drink it because uh, it says, for thou hast given them blood to drink. You know, if it's all the water became blood, then I guess you drink blood. <laughs> uh, if you can't drink anything else, uh, and so it's just a horrible, horrible judgment. All the rivers and, and the fountains became blood. And so, and it says they are worthy because they have killed the prophets and the saints, the blood of the saints and the prophets. All right. Many, many, many thousands and thousands and thousands of, uh, not only through all the generations, even in the tribulation time were killed. Those who trusted Christ as their Savior, who believed, who were followers of the Lamb, were killed and slaughtered and their blood was, was shed. And so uh, this was a just judgment turning the rivers into water uh, river and waters into blood so that you had to drink blood because they and it was a just judgment because they had killed the, 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 the shed the blood of the, of the saints and of the prophets that God sent to them okay and then the fourth uh, the sun scorched men with fire verse 8 through 9 uh, says this and a fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over this plague. 
and they repented not to give him glory. Okay? So the fourth uh, judgment here uh, of the vile judgment, the bold judgments, was that the sun was extremely hot and scorched men. Um, it burned them. Okay? And, and uh, I don't know if it killed them because they blasphemed his name. Uh, so it was just so hot and they were, you know, burning. Like, you know, if you get a sunburn, you don't die, but it's hard. You know, I, we were, uh, the year after I was married, we came to Japan to visit my parents for the summer. And uh, we stopped over in Hawaii, you know, because that's the only time we've, you know, vacationed there. I think. But uh, so um, we did things. We went different places and did certain things. And so we had something scheduled, you know, every day. My wife, she loves to go museums, and, and I'm not crazy. You know, I'll go, and I'll just tolerate it for her. But she was to read every single sign, and, you know, oh, this is so interesting. And like, oh, it's so boring. <laughs> she likes all that kind of stuff. So, so the, I think it was the last day we were there. I said, no, let's just go to the beach this morning. Let's just go lay out on the beach, okay? So we went out and just spent the morning on the beach. Laying on the, and so we put sunscreen on, and she put sunscreen on, I put sunscreen on. I got fried to a crisp. <laughs> my legs were burnt. I was red from head to toe. I couldn't walk. And I didn't have, you know, I didn't have any shorts. I was just wearing jeans. I was like, oh, 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 you know, burnt to a crisp. Red as, and she didn't get anything. You know, I mean, she was laying beside me. You know, and she, and I put sunscreen, she put sunscreen. But evidently my skin was different or whatever. But uh, I understand it hurts. It was painful. Okay, it's burnt up with the sun. Okay, and now this is probably more. This is scorched, you know. So, uh, but this was obviously a judgment from God. And they knew it was a judgment from God because what it says, um, and they blaspheme the name of God. Why would they blaspheme the name of God? It was a natural phenomenon, you know. I say stupid sun, you know, because they knew it wasn't the sun. It wasn't a natural phenomenon. It was God that was doing these things, uh, and they knew it was, and they blasphemed God's name. Uh, and then it says they repented not to give him glory. They knew it was God doing it, but they still, they, they cursed God instead of saying, you know, I'm deserving of this. I'm the one that is, you know, not, not obeying God. Uh, I'm the sinner. Uh, he has provided a way of salvation. Uh, and so instead of turning to God and seeking forgiveness, uh, which you would think that these would lead to because they knew it was God's judgments uh, his, of his wrath being poured out, they blasphemed him, and they did not repent. They would not confess their sin. They would not admit that they were wrong. They would not admit uh, that God was sovereign over them. Uh, that he was Lord, and he had a right to rule their life. They loved their sin, and they weren't about to give it up, even though they knew uh, they were rebelling against God. Okay? All right, so they blasphemed God all right, um, and did not repent. Okay, and then the fifth one. Uh, is darkness and pain. Verse 10 and 11 uh, says this, And the fifth angel, oh, let me, sorry. Uh, and the fifth angel uh, poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongue for pain, and, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pain and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Hey, same thing. Uh, now, now, now the judgment is not scorching sun. Now the judgment is darkness. And by the way, it was only darkness upon the kingdom of the beast. <laughs> of the, of the, uh, you know, so there was another, uh, again, a distinction between those who follow God and follow the Lamb and those who follow the beast and the devil. And uh, they didn't turn. They, they knew who was doing this. It was obvious because God's people were not affected by this. Uh, and so they knew it, but instead of repenting, they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pain, their swords, and repented not of their deeds. Uh, they didn't come and say, God, you know, we're wrong, forgive us. You are God. You have a right to tell us what to do. You have a right to demand every, anything of us, and we have the obligation, and, and you are worthy of our glory, uh, our, our praise, and, and us to glorify you. But they did not do that. They wanted to be masters of their own life even though God was making it clear that they couldn't, you know, they couldn't avoid God's judgments. They are not masters of their own life. You know, I've heard people saying, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what God says, kind of thing. And uh, 
And, and a guy said, you know, yeah, I'm going to go to hell and we're going to have a party there. You know, he didn't know what he was saying. All right. So they blasphemed God instead of repenting and turning from them. And then verse 12 is our sixth judgment. Uh, we'll get through this one and the next one and then we'll be finished. All right. Uh, verse um, 12 through 16. Uh, Euphrates dried up in preparation for an invasion, and the spirits of devils uh, gathered many to Armageddon. Okay, uh, verse uh, 12 through 16 says this: And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof, waters thereof, were dried up, and the way of the that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay, let me just pause there right now. Um, the river, which was a natural boundary to, to protect uh, the kingdom from the kings of the east, dried up so that they had no protection and an invading army could come in and invade them. That's the, that's the point of that judgment. Uh, and I saw three, verse 13, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of uh, the great uh, battle of that great day of God Almighty. And behold, come as a thief, blessed he watch and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and, sh and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. You've heard of the battle of Armageddon, I'm sure. Uh, that is the battle that uh, the the false prophet and the beast and, and the devil gathers all the his followers uh, to uh, the valley of um, uh, Gido. It's north of Jerusalem. If you look on a map, you can sometimes, some maps have it listed there, Armageddon, and uh, that's where the battle will be. Not, not that it's, you know, a great battle and it's back and forth. No, you know, they're annihilated immediately when Christ comes back in the second coming. It's a battle of Armageddon. But this, these, these uh, spirits, these demon spirits, go forth to, to gather people, to convince them to fight against God. Uh, and they gather at the, at the Armageddon. And uh, I don't know if you even call it a battle. You know, when God comes and he fights against you, there's no, <laughs> there's no hope of victory. Um, but that shows you the, the sinfulness and the uh, deceived heart of men who love their sin. They're, they're able to be deceived. You, I don't know what the demons told them and the spirits that the look like frogs told them what, what they convinced people by what they did and what, the miracles, that they, the, the uh, signs that they showed and convinced people. Uh, verse 14, for, for they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world and gather them in the battle of... The, of uh, the great God, the day, the day of God Almighty, okay? So he gathers them for the battle of Armageddon. I don't know what he has to say to people to convince them to fight against God, but there's no contest when you fight against God. You will lose. Um, but they gathered, and they were able to gather them, and there would be a great battle. Uh, not in the fact that, you know, when we say it was a great battle, <laughs> you usually say, you know, you know one side fighting and the other guy come back and there's a close contest, you know. No, this wasn't a great battle. It was a great battle because there's a lot of people there, uh, but it was a great battle because the Lord annihilated them immediately uh, in the battle of the Armageddon there. All right, so that's the, the sixth judgment. Uh, and then the seventh judgment is ends up with uh, the same uh, Things of voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquake. Uh, and this one has hail too. All right? So verse 17 through 21 is the final uh, seventh last plague. So let's look at verse 17 through 21. Um, it says, And the seventh angel poured out his vow upon the, earth, uh, upon the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven and from the throne, saying, It is done. Okay? It is done. It's finished. It's, it's fulfilled, what that means. Uh, the Japanese word says joju, like a fulfillment of a prophecy. It is fulfilled. Uh, and there were great, and there were thunder, uh, voices and thunders and lightnings. And there were great earthquakes, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. 
So, there, you know, there's natural phenomena. There's an earthquake every day in Japan, okay? But this earthquake, nobody would mistake it as a natural phenomenon. It's a great earthquake such as has never been experienced uh, in the history of man, okay? And the verse 19 says, And the great city was divided into three parts. And so Jerusalem was divided into three parts, and the city of the nations fell, and the great Babylon came in remembrance before God, and uh, gave into her a cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Uh, every uh, every stone and every weight of the and uh, about a weight of a talent. Okay? And uh, men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, and plagues uh, thereof was exceeding great. Okay. So this is the last judgment of God, and then the battle of Armageddon, and uh, then Christ comes and. Uh, the second, at the second coming, and then begins the uh, thousand-year reign of Christ. Okay? And so this is the events that lead up to that, the last uh, plagues and the last events that lead up to Christ's return. And then finally, uh, now, so we've been talking about the tribulation time is seven years, and we know that because uh, there's clear uh, numbers that have been set, 42 months, and there's certain th so many thousand days, and, and if you add those numbers together, uh, about seven years, uh, half of it, you know, half of seven, 42 weeks is, or is uh, half of a year, 42 months is a week. Um, yeah, 42 months would be three and a half years, okay, so 42 months. Uh, and so there's three and a half years, the first part of the tribulation, and three and a half years, the second part of the tribulation, the great tribulation. Uh, and then Christ comes back, and Christ will return at the second coming. Uh, and so the rapture, and the next thing will happen on our time table is the rapture. Let me just uh, in closing, we'll just look at this uh, real quick. Just the, I wanted to look at the order of uh, that Revelation teaches um, and the different aspects of it. And so the top is the saints. Look at the middle part there. It says the resurrection. Okay, so this is the the time from the resurrection. You know, before that's the Old Testament period, and then the New Testament period, of the resurrection. And now we're in what we call the church age. Do you have your pen thingy? Um, the church age. Uh, is what we're now, the church age or the age of grace. Um, God has paused his working through Israel and is now, uh, we're, we've been grafted in, the Gentiles have been grafted in, and we are, uh, this is what's called the age of grace or the church age. Oh, great, thank you. What do you do, push this one? Oh, okay, good, good. So we're right here in this church age. The resurrection has happened, um, and uh, right here the church age starts. And then the next thing on the event is the rapture. Uh, when the, the uh, saints will be uh, the raised, those who are dead in Christ will be raised, and the we which are alive and remain will be caught up together uh, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Okay, so that will be the, the uh, rapture there. Whoops, wrong one. All right, and then, uh, then there's seven year, in, we are up in heaven for seven years, the marriage of the Lamb, and then, and down here is the seven year of tribulation, the three and a half years and three and a half years of tribulation. And so that's what we've been talking about in Matthew chapter 24 and then in Revelation chapter 6 through uh, 19 actually. Uh, it talks about um, this tribulation time, all these things that are going to be happening during that, that year. And then the Battle of Armageddon is right here. The Battle of Armageddon uh, that is recorded in Zechariah chapter 12, uh, verse 9 through 11, and Revelation 16. 16, as we read just a while ago, um, and uh, that's the Battle of Armageddon, and then second coming, Christ will come back down to earth, and, and then the thousand-year reign of Christ will begin, right? Uh, and so, many people say, and I, I've, most of the conservative commentaries I've read said that when Christ comes, he will, uh, he will um, annihilate everybody that's not a Christian, okay? Everybody will get, be killed. Um, and so if that's the case, then everybody who goes... Okay, so right here. In the rapture, the Christians are taken out and everybody that's left is not a Christian. Okay, All the Christians are gone. Everybody's not a Christian. But during the tribulation, many, many, many people will be... Thousands and thousands and thousands of people will be saved and thousands and thousands of people will be killed for their testimony of Christ. Uh, and then those people who were killed for the testimony of Christ will come back and uh, the Bible says they'll rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Okay, So uh, they'll come back with Christ at the second coming and we'll come back with him also and rule and reign with him for a thousand years. All right, Now, 
if so, and if during this t- battle of Armageddon, if everybody that's not a Christian is taken out and killed, then all that's left will be Christians. But by the time you get to the end of the thousand years, uh, you have a battle of Gog and Magog, a battle again against God. And so the devil will be bound for a thousand years, and at the end he'll be loose for a little while. Revelation 20, verse 3 and verse 7 says he'll be loose for a little while at the end, and he'll gather thousands, endless, unnumerable amounts of people. Okay? Because a thousand years, during the thousand year reign, and we're, we'll talk about this, we're not really, I'm just giving you an overview, we're not really talking in detail about this, but during the thousand years, um, if you read passages like Isaiah chapter 11, it gives us the condition of the tribulation time, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the thousand year reign of Christ. Uh, there will be, God will rule with, a, uh, Jesus will rule with a rod of iron. In other words, sin will be punished immediately so there won't be much sin, okay? And the conditions will be changed. It says um, the, the, ch- the baby will play with the, the serpents and the uh, lamb will be with the bear and the lions and things like that. It will be, it's, it'll be different. Things will be different. The sin will be largely removed. The, the conditions of sin will be remediated. And uh, so people won't be sinning like they are because they will be judged immediately. Uh, conditions will be changed uh, in a thousand years. But... Uh, some people who are born still won't accept Christ. They are secretly in their hearts are sinners. They're rebellious against Christ. And they won't accept his rule. And so at the end of the thousand years, the devil is released for a little while. I don't, it doesn't say how long, but released for a little while so that he can go out and gather those. And he gives you know, thousands and thousands and you know, probably hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people gathers and, uh, at the battle of Gog and Magog. And of course, again, you know, fight against God. That you know, sounds silly, doesn't it? But if your heart is rebellious against God and you want to overthrow his rule, and you know, we, we fight against God. We try to overthrow his rule in our life. We argue with God. We say, God, I don't want, you know, I know you want me to do it, but I don't want to, you know. We, we argue with him, even as Christians sometimes. So people don't want, they want to do what they want to do. And they don't want to do what God wants them to do. And so at the, thousand, at the end of the thousand year, when they, when they have somebody come by and say, we're going to rebel against God. We're going to fight. We're going to beat God. Come on, join us. You know, thousands and thousands of people go. And then there's a battle of Gog and Magog. And of course, it's not a long battle either. And uh, the devil is defeated, of course, just like he was defeated back here. And you would think these people would see that the devil is defeated back here. <laughs> they wouldn't follow him. But uh, sinners aren't smart, you know. Um, it, it, it's not a matter of smarts, what I'm saying. You know, it's not a matter of whether, whether they're smart or not. That's not the point. The point is their hearts are sinful. They're unyielding to God. Um, and so uh, the devil will be defeated, and the devil will be cast in a lake of fire for eternity, and then there will be the way, great white with throne judgment, and then a uh, new heaven and a new earth. So. And then uh, the Satan down here during this time, Satan in, on this earth during the church age, he's ruling, the Bible says, and the Acts chapter 26, verse 18, Luke 13, 16, and Ephesians 2, 2 say that. He's ruling. And then during the tribulation time, I forgot to put that, but uh, he'll be reigning. He'll be uh, have more. The, the, uh, the Bible in the King James says, he that leadeth will be taken out. So the Holy Spirit is largely restricting the devil's activities right now, but he'll be, his hand will be lifted off and the devil will have more free reign during the tribulation time. And then at the end of the tribulation, he'll be defeated. Uh, at the Battle of Armageddon, he'll be defeated, and he'll be bound, and he'll be, for a thousand years, he'll be bound uh, into the pit uh, with chains and not be able to influence people. But at the end, he'll be let, let loose a little bit, and then he'll defeat again, and then be cast in the lake of fire for eternity. Okay? Now, down here, uh, the saints, right now, if uh, during the church age, if the saints die, they go to heaven. Okay? Um, and then during this time we'll be going, caught up and we'll be seven years in the air with Christ and then we'll come back here down to earth to rule and to reign with Christ for the thousand years uh, then at the end of the thousand years there'll be a white throne judgment and uh, then the final thing we'll look at is the resurrected body okay? we will receive everybody every human being that's ever been born that's ever lived will have a resurrected body not only Christians and non-Christians, okay? So Christ is called the first fruits in John chapter 7, and especially Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 and 23, uh, call him the first fruits. His resurrected body is like the body we will have. But right now, nobody else has it except Christ, okay? Nobody has a body, a resurrected body like Christ. At the rapture, at the rapture, we will be changed, okay? 
um, we will receive a body like Christ received. And so uh, those people who are dead in Christ and then who are, who are alive at the rapture will receive their bodies right here. At, I'm sorry, living, dead and living saints will receive their new bodies there. And then those killed for the testimony of Christ during the tribulation at this point will receive uh, who are not great. The Old Testament saints and the, these tribulation saints will receive their new bodies right there. And then after the thousand years, uh, the battle of after the battle of Gog and Magog, there will be the great right through judgment where every sinner, uh, the millennial saints, the saints that get, went through the millennium, who, you know, everybody is before the new heaven and new earth. At the new heaven and earth, nobody will have an old body, okay? During the thousand years, there are people who survived the tribulation, and those are people who populated the earth during these thousand years. Uh, and I can't imagine what the population of the earth is during that time because there, during that thousand year reign, there won't be diseases, there won't be any, you know, stuff that prevents, you know, um, people, ch children won't be born, uh, there won't be any, what do you call them, I infant deaths, infant mortality rate will be zero, <laughs> okay? Uh, and so there, I don't know what the population will be, but it'll be a lot. All right? And during that time, uh, so before the new heaven, new earth, uh, the millennial saints, and then every person, and the Bible says that hell will be empty, the great, great fight during judgment, and then uh, hell and death, and, and they will be, be get a new body and be cast in the lake of fire. Okay? And so everybody will be having a new body that will last forever. A physical body that's you know, like Christ. Okay? He could go through walls, he could appear when he wanted, but he could eat things. So I don't know what kind of body that is, but that's the kind of body we'll have. Right? And that's what everybody can look forward to. Okay? Alright, so the resurrection is for the just and the unjust. Um, John chapter 5 verse 29 says the resurrection of the just and the unjust so we will all be raised there won't be anybody who's not raised and given a new body uh, whether you're just or unjust so but you will have that new body and you will spend eternity with God in the new heaven and new earth or you will spend eter eternity in that new body in the lake of fire one or the other so that's just a simple overview and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later right? Okay, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for these things that you've told us that will happen in the future. We might not understand all of them perfectly, but we see that you have a plan, and that includes these future events. And so, Father, the, the important thing that we come away with is that we are submissive to you. We are obedient to you. There will be results and consequences for sin. Help us to be faithful to you. Help us to... to uh, be an influence on those around us because we know, even though they might not, we know that a future without Christ is bleak. Whether it be a future in hell or it be a future that has to go through the tribulation. So I pray, Father, that you would help us to live, as uh, Peter says, knowing these things, what, what manner of men we ought to be. Help us to live righteously because we know that one day these things will happen and then help us to have a compassion and a burden for others around us, knowing that if they don't turn to Christ, they will have to go through these things. And so I pray you would help us to have a burden to reach the lost. Use us for your glory throughout this week. Give us strength and help us keep our eyes upon you and help us to keep our um, noses in your word so that we can understand what you would have for us. Use us for your glory this week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's close by singing uh, number, let's see, number... 391. Just sing the first stanza of that. 391. Stick around for a little bit of uh, fellowship. We have a couple of snacks there, so please stick around. Thank you.
Can I get, can I get a 